How's it going everybody? My name is Lou Shivo. I'm one of the owners at Worldwide Corals. Being an owner here, I have to wear many different hats, so it's been tough for me to keep a tank at my desk over the years. But after Reef Plus Orlando, talking to Shalom over at eShops, I decided to take him up on a challenge. The challenge was to see who could do a better Pico tank over a span of four months. I mean, I've been wanting to do it for years. It's so peaceful and tranquil when you're sitting there in a, in a busy day where you just take a kind of break away from everything else and kind of enjoy your tank at your desk. For the Pico tank, I'm kind of limited on space. So what I actually did is I added a heater in the back, a small little 10 watt heater. And I also added, instead of adding a power head, I added a VCA a return nozzle. It actually has different kind of cuts and grooves in it, so it kind of changes the direction of the water. So that alone gave me the alternating current that I needed. And for the lighting, I went with the tried and true Aqua Illumination Prime. I found that out of all the smaller lights, that the Prime gives you the best results based on what we do here at Worldwide Coral and our, our Pico tanks. I took one of the Worldwide Coral's templates for one of their Pico tanks, and I kind of adjusted it down in the beginning. And after about three weeks, I raised it up 3%, then another 3% after three weeks after that. Then I raised another 3%. So now I have it up to about where I wanted it to be. It's running at about 25 to 30% max on the light. The majority of the tank is LPS corals and some softies. So it's perfect for what I needed to do. So I got together with Victor and I, put, I talked with Victor. I said, hey man, where do you have some nice rocks stashed? So he kind of showed me in the back there. Fuck off, this is expensive rock. This is my secret stash. A lot of people don't get to see this. It's behind the scenes, fully wow. cured rock. Nice Look how clear this water is, guys. This rock is cure. I mean, I'm talking about beyond cure. This is ready to rock and roll a tank. Big pieces, on. medium pieces, tiny pieces. So we went back there and I picked out like five of the really nice rocks. I mean, good, really good shapes. I was able to kind of mimic the lagoon where I did like two, two arms coming out and a nice little arch over the top. So I had some live sand, my water, and then the rocks that I chose. So I waited about, about a whole month before I put any livestock in there. Three years ago, before we opened the shop, we did very little uh, sand tanks. But when we opened up the new Superstore, we did quite a few t uh, sand bottom tanks. So I kind of got back into the groove of doing sand again. And I really like the way it looks. I love bare bottom tanks, but for a small Pico tank, I think that having some sand in there is the way to go. I went with Fiji Pink because it's, it's the grade is pretty fine, but it's not too fine where it blows around everywhere. And it's not too coarse where you can't have like just sand dwelling animals. So I have a couple of Nasaria snails in there. And I also wanted to put probably a sand sifting star in the future but I haven't found one small enough yet. So when it came to selecting corals, I mean, I have the run of the mill. I could pick it just about anything I want. You know, I have a couple of uh, gems in there, like the Bubblegum Monster, which is one of our original OG corals. I have the Miami Hurricane Chalice, which is another one of our OG corals. I got a, I got a really nice Jawbreaker Mushroom in there. Then I want some really nice corals. There's really nice Recordias, uh, some really nice Gonopores. I mean, I love Ghanis. Some nice Akins. Uh, that's the majority of it, and some mushrooms. So with this tank, I faced about just about every challenge that you'd face in a big tank. I had bubble algae, I had a bout with Optatia, I had some filament algae in there. So I battled a couple different things throughout the life of the tank. So I haven't really put any utilitarian fish in there because it's very small and there's not many you put in there. But I did try a few gobies. I tried a Dracula goby that ended up jumping and then I had a Yasha goby for about two weeks that I don't know what happened to it. In addition to that, I'm looking for a really nice pair of clownfish. So I'll be on a hunt for those here in WWC. I'll be hunting for them. I change water every week. I change about a gallon to a gallon and a half. Basically change the sock. I have a sock in the filtration. I have an eShop sock in there. I adjust the lights as needed. You know, I keep an eye on those. Make sure I wipe down the outside of the tank. So almost daily I clean the acrylic with a magic erasure sponge. I don't use a magnet. And because it's acrylic, you can barely see there's any tank there. So it's amazing, except for the orange glow that comes up through the bottom of the acrylic because it has the orange glow bottom. There's a large chamber in the back for your return and your filtration. So there's no cover on there. So I had one of the guys here at the shop craft me a cover because I was getting a lot of algae built up back there, which isn't a bad thing because it was staying out of the tank. But you know, now that I actually put the cover on it, I noticed overall there's not that much algae in the tank. And it could be just a matter of either that or that time has gone on and the tank is more established now. So in Reef Toulouse, Texas, Reef Toulouse decided to, to crown the winner. And I know it was leading up to that point, but you know, when I got there on Thursday, I really didn't look at the thread Thursday, Friday or Saturday. So Sunday was the big day of, to pick the winner. So the rev from Reef to Reef gathered a bunch of people around his tank because he had a big raffle going on and he also going to announce the winner. So I went over there and when I seen so many people, I kind of got like, oh my gosh, I can't believe any people are actually here for this contest. So Shalom showed up, I showed up, and I had a pretty good idea I won, but it wasn't 100% in the bag. I mean, that's my name, it was like, it felt great. I mean, it felt like, you know, I did it, you know, and it's like, 
after all these years of kind of staying away from actually keeping my own tank because of uh, time, and I had an award-winning tank, and he actually surprised me with the tank of the month for December, which I didn't even know was even going to happen. So it was a great, great award for sure. The best piece of advice that I give someone who's setting up their first reef tank is just to be patient. I mean, this is a hobby for patience, especially in the beginning. You know, give it that right time to cycle. You know, you want at least four weeks. If you give it six weeks, great. Be patient with your fish. Be patient with your corals. And uh, it'll all pay off in the end. And consistency also is the key. Staying consistent with your water changes and anything you do to keep the tank clean is important as well. When you're facing these parasites and adversities in your tank, just don't get down. Other people have done it before and gotten through it. You know, whoever you're seeking advice from, try to stick with that source and, and for that advice and stick with it. Because you hear a lot of different people giving you different advices. You might start throwing different things in the tank or different methods or, methods or remedies, and it might not work, or it might work against you. Just stay consistent with your remedies and what you do, and try to take advice from too many different people when it comes to these things like battling parasites, anything in the aquarium. My favorite thing about the tank, it has to be the, uh, actually the orange acrylic. I mean, it's pretty unique, the way it makes it glow. You know, when we have the blue lights on, and it's all clean, and uh, the lights are off in the, in the room, it just pops. It looks great. I mean, I would definitely recommend this tank to someone. Being that it's small doesn't mean it's easy to take care of. You have to stay on top of things, because things can change quickly in a small aquarium. So what I want to end it with is that no matter how long you've been doing this for, even the pros have problems and issues with tanks, so stay, stay up. Keep your head up and keep pushing forward and stay consistent with your tank and also be patient, like I said earlier. Thank you for everybody who took part in the contest and reef2reef.com for putting on a great contest and these shops for sponsoring it as well. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next video.